Well, we, we cover the whole spectrum. Yeah. So we would look at drill hole results, but we would also focus probably more of our energy on developments that are actually going into construction. Yep. And then we cover producers as well. Some producers that are still growing. And I would say in general, um, probably we evaluate our firm by the number of opportunities we cover versus the number of mines being built. So mm -hmm. that's our, our track record, if you will, is to have the best possible batting average for mines that are being built. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. So that, that, that that's, that's fair, right? Cause you're, you're looking at it in a standpoint where, you know, think of it as a Lasson curve. Once it gets into that development stage, it's going to crash off of the discovery potential because reality kicks in. But you know what's going to be—you know what's going to be produced from that mine, right? So, no, no disrespect to Pierre, but we're we're going to rename that the common sense curve. The common sense it's curve. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. The common sense curve is when, when <laughs> it needs to be, it needs to become real, and you need to raise a lot a of a lot money of dough. For it. There's yeah. going to be, a, there's going to be a bit of a gut check, right? Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, when so, you got a CapEx of, you know, hundreds of millions, some of these projects are very remote. You got to put roads in, you got to do all this stuff. Um, it takes time, right? You can't, you know, Rome wasn't built in, in a day, right? That's right. All right. Yeah. So going, going so, on uh, then here with me today is Bay street legend, Peter Groskopf, who's the CEO of Sprott Capital Partners. We'll be discussing multiple topics today, including the latest moves by Janet Yellen, which many are referring to as the worst mistake in U.S. Treasury history. His thoughts on commodity prices, along with operating costs of running mines today. His firm's view on consolidation and M&A within the mining space. And Groskopf's latest moves acquiring the investment banking firm, Firm Sprott Inc., and the latest moves with Nordic. Peter, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Great. So, Peter, let's start off by the latest moves that's happening with the U.S. Treasury. Janet Yellen's come under serious pressure since interest rates have spiked to 20-year highs. When interest rates were virtually zero, she was issuing two-year Treasury bonds at 15 points when she could have been issuing 10 years for 70 basis points or 30 years at 180 basis points. Now, 5% interest rates with the national debt levels around 30 U.S. trillion. How do you see the U.S. Treasury handling this debt crisis? I don't believe they think that it's a crisis at this stage. Um, so I read recently that the issuance over the next two quarters alone is going to be 1.5 trillion. And um, the same uh, Janet Yellen went uh, into an interview where she quoted the long bond rate as being symptomatic of a strong economy. That's why we have higher long bond rates. I think that, um, people probably need to start asking themselves whether it's perhaps a function of demand and supply again in the long treasury bond market where there's just so much supply uh, coming at us that investors are just uh, demanding a higher rate of interest for those long bonds. I, I think it's clear that the Fed and the treasury still control the short rate, as you mentioned, uh, but even short rates have been raised to supposedly contain inflation. And I think overall paying four or five times more interest on 33 trillion of debt is probably going to become a, a mathematical formula that will eventually worry people going forward. They're, they're not currently worried. And I think they should be. So what do you think then? Do you, do you think that there's going to be some sort of restructuring of this debt that's going to have to come up at sooner, sooner or later? Or do you think they're just going to keep kicking the can down until something essentially breaks here? Yeah. So how do you handle it as the deficit and the um, overall debt levels uh, for the U.S. build, say, towards 40 trillion? I think there will need to be some changes. Most notably, I believe that the Fed will need to stand in and soak up or buy a larger portion of Treasury issuance, much like the Bank of Japan had been doing for years. So you're going to probably see that. And then also some sort of de declaration of victory that inflation is now dead and, yeah. and that they can start to lower rates to ease the uh, pressure, which... I also seriously doubt whether inflation will actually be quelled as they make those victory announcements. Yeah. Well, 
I think, you know, that segues to where, where people are seeing value in the precious metal space, right? Because, you know, the genie, you know, is out of the bottle now. Everyone knows what's going on. Interest uh, inflation is not going anywhere, right? We're going to stay in these high inflationary periods. Um, everything has gone expensive. Where do you see value uh, for investors, you know, running Sprott Capital Partners now? Where do you see you know, generalists coming into the markets, do you see them picking up precious metal stocks now? Do you see them getting into the into the mining side of things? Um, not yet. Um, so I'll perhaps start with gold itself. Um, I think that you could declare 2023 a victory for gold, uh, despite rates which were spiking to recently record levels. And a very strong U.S. dollar. Gold has been holding surprisingly well. So in an environment of a $2,000 gold price that looks like it's threatening to break out, why have gold stocks done so abysmally this year? Mm -hmm. And that is a very good question. I think in general, the, the generalists have been comfortable with other sides of the capital market including tech stocks, which have really dominated the S&P mm -hmm. numbers this year. And generalists have not been coming to gold at all. So the majors have really been flatlining to, 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 to going down this year, and the juniors have been decimated. Mm -hmm. So why that big dislocation? And I think it comes down to costs. Gold companies have been eating higher costs this year. And uh, as a result, free cash flows have generally disappointed mm -hmm. and in that kind of an environment broad, broader investors or generalist investors uh, kind of overlook the sector they, they don't look at it because it's having some problems mm -hmm. so do you think then moving forward for for you know the generalist investors the the smaller funds the you know the average joe you can refer to them as right do you think they need you know to see some of these companies consolidate more of their these single single assets you know consolidate them into one vehicle and then potentially they they come more attractive do you, do, you, do you see that do you do you do you think consolidation in the in the in the in the in the senior space or even the juniors do you think that that's needed for for the next leg up to see the equities perform here I don't think it's the number one driving factor of equities. I, I think the number one driving factor would probably be a, a gold price rally mm -hmm. from uh, today's levels to break out and create an environment again where you're you're going to um, widen the margins for the industry. Mm -hmm. So that would be the number one because they are levered to the gold price. And, and I think we're going to get that this year is, is a very good gold price performance. The second uh, element would be consolidation. And mm -hmm. I do think consolidation, the groundwork has been laid. The bigger companies have been consolidating. Mm -hmm. We saw Newmont and Newcrisp just get um, completed. Approval. And yeah, and, and generally that, that will result in better returns as companies have broader portfolios of assets and less G&A per ounce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... Also, I expect to see the seniors starting to buy up some of these undervalued juniors. Mm -hmm. So that would be another catalyst. Mm -hmm. But let's face it, the biggest catalyst of all is just positive share price movement. So oh, I yeah. think just seeing some recoveries from today's depressed levels yeah. will get the confidence back in, in the gold stock area. Yeah. So do you like on your side of things, do you see a lot of like uh, the guys that you're raising money for, you're doing deals for? What are, what are they what are they kind of telling you are they are they are they coming to you and saying Peter you know we don't need to raise money we're we're profitable at at, at 2000 gold I mean yes our operating costs have gone up since the pandemic right um obviously oil is up wages are up all these things are contributing to the bottom line but they are still generating free cash flow and they do not want to do anything right now because of their share price being so weak do you see guys, you know, kind of more of a, I wouldn't say care and maintenance, but do you see guys kind of laying low, you know, they're, they're just performing quarter after quarter, doing what they're saying they're going to do. And, and, and then they're going to, then they're saying, Peter, bring me something that's of interest or like, how do you seeing all that? No, 
I think it's valid that the, the senior companies, the operators are laying low. They are focusing on margins, mm -hmm. but they're also very, very busy looking at each other and they're looking at projects. So I think they're waiting for opportunities, openings to announce deals. Whereas the developers, they need cash. And most of them uh, obviously are still building projects and they need more cash than they did a few years ago because mm -hmm. the projects are more expensive. So people have been, and investors have been very nervous about that developer tier and the, the, the real juniors mm -hmm. because they don't want to face dilution and they don't want to have companies raising money. But unfortunately, those companies do need to raise money yeah. and they need, just need to, they need to do it smartly. They need to do it with a, a broader audience than they used to. I don't think the precious metal funds themselves are are cut out to invest a lot in juniors anymore mm -hmm. so so this actually goes into the next one here so obviously you recently did a management buyout of sprot the uh, the investment banking firm from sprot inc correct mm -hmm. what was yes. what was your thesis on that what, what was the reasoning well um for Sprott, it made sense for both sides, and I think it was a win-win. Uh, for Sprott, they're focusing on money management. They have mm -hmm. a very high margin uh, global marketing business for especially those physical trusts that they're running. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having a dealer, an intellectual capital business, a relationship business in the middle of that money management area, it was kind of like an odd, an odd duck. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, I saw the potential to have a performing global boutique that handles the mining business would have very, very um, valuable franchise and filled with intellectual capital and relationships. I saw that as being a business that was going to have years of growth ahead of it and just needed a little bit of investment, continued investment in people. And that the industry now is probably twice the size it was three, four years ago. And it's mm -hmm. because of the strategic minerals and the enterprise the decarbonization minerals yep. and the interest in those. So that's a very large, broad growing global trend. So are you, are you financing a lot of these? You said, you said these energy transition metals, are you financing a lot of these energy transition metals? Are you, are you, are you backing a lot of these lithium deals and, and some of these other, you know, commodities that are popping up here? Yeah, I, I would say that we're quite advanced on uranium or, yep. or and we're a provider of capital to that sector in a pretty big way. Uh, rare earths, I would say lithium, we were heavy about three, four years ago, took a bit of a break while lithium prices were kind of soaring and those valuations were all um, kind of blowing the top off. Broadly. And now we're coming back into, we're, we're coming back into lithium now because yeah. I do think it'll be a good long-term market. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality check has come into a lot of these juniors that, you know, it has. Are, yeah. You know, a lot of these guys, as as you saw, right, there was they were, you know, staking, you know, next to next to next to uh, a deposit. Right. And like every junior would go, you know, from let's say let's say there is that that major that has that, you know, that PMET level asset. And then the next junior beside it will stake around them. And then now they're 10 percent of a PMET, which was trading at almost two billion market cap. And then they justified a 200 million dollar valuation. And the next guy went further out than them. And they were justifying a $50 million valuation right now. All those companies are all down. You know, those companies are all down 80, 90%, right? They're dead in the water, but right. then the PMATs are down 40, 50%. So you're definitely seeing the larger companies, companies like Sigma, companies like PMAT and a few other of these names, Alcom in the U in Australia, they've all come off quite significantly, but they're still making big, big, big profits, right? On their minds, right? Their costs are very low and, and, and prices yeah. are lifting. Now, now, still, now they've kind stable. of... I think they've positioned themselves on a on a, a more reasonable valuation basis now, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and it also the industry is a little bit further along. So you can tell the ones that have the better chemistry, that have the actual ability to start a mine, and those are trading at much more reasonable values. So I think we've set the the table now for uh, a good investment landscape in lithium. For sure, for sure. So your focus, is it still, I mean, I've watched a few of your interviews, is your focus still these discovery kind of just getting going in production stage or or have you, have your, has, your, has your view changed on more pure discovery or more later stage assets? Like where are you seeing the value right now? 
Well, we, we cover the whole spectrum. Yeah. So we would look at drill hole results, but we would also focus probably more of our energy on developments that are actually going into construction. Yep. And then we cover producers as well. Some producers that are still growing. And I would say in general, um, probably we evaluate our firm by the number of opportunities we cover versus the number of mines being built. So mm -hmm. that's our, our track record, if you will, is to have the best possible batting average for mines that are being built. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. So that, that, that that's, that's fair, right? Cause you're, you're looking at it at a standpoint where, you know, think of it as a Lasson curve. Once it gets into that development stage, it's going to crash off of the discovery potential because reality kicks in. But you know what's going to be, you know what's going to be produced from that mine, right? So no, no disrespect to Pierre, but we're we're going to rename that the common sense curve. The common sense like, curve. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The common sense curve is when, when <laughs> it needs to it needs to become real, and you need to raise a lot a of a lot money of dough. For it. There's yeah. going to be, a, there's going to be a bit of a gut check, right? Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, when you got a CapEx of, you know, hundreds of millions, some of these projects are very remote. You got to put roads in, you got to do all this stuff. Um, it takes time, right? You can't, you know, Rome wasn't built in, in a day, right? That's right. All right. Yeah. So going, going so, on uh, then. Yeah. Like Nordic, what, what's, what's, what was, what was the, what, what's the plan with Nordic? I mean, that was kind of a silent thing that happened and then boom, 500 well, I'm, million I'm, bucks. I'm, I'm surprised you've done your research on that and, and determined the name. It's not public yet, actually, but um, oh, okay. Look, I, I'm 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 helping uh, Harry Lundin uh, set up to uh, invest in the development sector, and um, the strategy is uh, uh, convert uh, focus focus on convertible, but really it's to put sponsorship capital into development companies. And uh, we're not um, at the stage that's not launched yet, but very soon uh, we'll be in a position to um, start to start to uh, get a portfolio of investments in that in that in that fund. And that'll be all convertible note financings. Not all um, have to be flexible, but mm -hmm. um, if you think about the juniors now, they are so dislocated from value; mm -hmm. they're so cheap. Mm -hmm. There's many projects that are trading cents on the dollar for what the capital has been put into them. And they have a lot of leverage on those projects to higher mineral prices, which I think are here to stay. So it's never been a bigger dislocation. What they need is vetting, due diligence, a good sponsorship. They need an equity champion uh, and, and then to be led into project financing or in some cases, strategic sales. And so we're hoping to put together a, a fund that can handle those investments. Wow. Um, the largest, the yeah. largest investors, they don't, they don't want that in a mutual fund context. They don't want a liquid fund. They want a private fund. So that's kind of the format. Wow. That's, 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 that's a, that's a relatively new idea. I don't really, I haven't seen anyone that does anything like that. Right. There are some private equity style firms out there in mining that are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. They've focused on different styles of investing. And I would mm -hmm. say this is more of a sponsorship style that uh, Harry is looking to, to take. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, perfect. I mean, that, that kind of concludes everything. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to speak about, but um, that was, that was a great, that was a great show. And um I love, love, love chatting with you for the first time over, over this. I mean, yes, we've had a few conversations going back and forth, but you know, I think the gold space is headed for a violent, you know, uptick here. I mean, I don't, I don't know where, where the price is going to land. I don't, I, no one ever knows, right? But there's going to be a lot of generalists. There's going to be a lot of players that are going to come into the space, and you, you'll see. I mean, you've seen it more times than anyone else has, but you know, you can probably see in August 2020 in the equities where things just take off or a uh, you know, 2011, you know, that 2011 period where things just took off. Right. So I don't know how you yeah, see that. It but... happens. It happens very quickly. And unless you're positioned ahead of it, you generally think you've missed it because it happens so, so quickly. I would say uh, for your customers and readers, um, we do have a private client uh, division uh, led by John Waldy, so you can look him up and he's capable of dealing with individual investors. I think that that's really interesting 
because they do need, you know, professional kind of um, help around a portfolio. It, it, it's a tough sector. It's, it's a sector that has a lot of risk, but it also has an enormous amount of upside right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's going to be like the tech tech deals all over again. Right. You know, it could be like a dot com boom. Right. But for it could juniors. be. <laughs> Great. I'm looking forward to that. 100%. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for coming on today and sharing your insights. I appreciate everyone that's watching. And please put any comments down below. I love to hear how everyone's currently viewing the markets and what are your top commodities or sectors you're investing in. Thank you, Peter, for your time. All right. Thank you. Cheers.